everyone. I'm Miss Karen at Adams Memorial Library. Thank you so much for joining me and Mr. Alex for this month's Inquire Within program. So in April, last month's Inquire Within program, we talked about going outside and exploring and looking for insects. Well, this month we're talking about going outside and exploring and looking for birds. So it's all about birds this month. Now, I don't know about you, but I love birds. I really, really love looking at them. And I love, love, love to hear them singing. But I don't really feel like I know enough about birds. I would like to know which bird I'm hearing singing. And I'd like to know the names of the birds that I'm seeing. So does that sound like you too? Would you like more information about birds? Well, if you would, you can come to the library and pick up this month's kit. You can come down to the children's room and pick up one of the bags. Or if you'd like, you can just give us a call and we'll reserve some for you and you can pick them up through curbside service, whatever you'd like. But in the kit this month, there's different information about different things that you can do all involving birds. Mr. Alex is going to talk about how you can make a bird feeder at home from recycled materials. So then you can have the birds coming right to your house. If you feed them, they'll probably want to visit and then you can observe them that way. And Mr. Alex is also going to talk about how to make your own journal for keeping track of the birds you see. If you're out and about, you can just take your journal out and write down what birds you see, maybe draw a picture of them, and then you can find more information. You can come to the library and look up your birds, or you can look them up on the internet and see if you can name more birds, and then you can come and tell me about it, and then we'll all learn. And I'm going to be talking about a snack that you can make, because looking for birds can be hungry work. You might need a snack on the way. And I'll also be talking about something you can do at home to help keep birds safe. So if you're ready, we'll talk about everything that you can do all about birds. Hi, friends. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Mr. Alex, and I'm here for our first bird activity. Now, for our first bird activity, we are actually going to go into our Inquire Within kit and get these instructions right here about how to make our own bird feeder. Now, this process is pretty simple, but can be a little bit dangerous. So you definitely want to have an adult's help for this one. So we're going to be making a plastic bottle bird feeder that looks just like this. And for this bird feeder, obviously, the first thing that we're going to need is a bottle. And you should have a bottle just like this one in your kit, and it'll still have the label on it. So you're going to want to remove that label, uh, maybe with some water or some goo gone if you have help from an adult. And then you'll have just your plastic bottle. The next step is that we're going to need to put a couple of holes into our plastic bottle, just like these that I have right here at the top. Now, as I mentioned, this can be kind of dangerous, so we definitely want help from an adult. Kids at home, definitely do not try this step by yourself. Adults, what I recommend doing for this step of the craft is taking the push pin included in your kit, pressing it into the bottle, wiggling it around a little bit, and then grabbing your pair of scissors. If you take the sharp pointy end and put it into the pinhole, you should be able to give your scissors a twist and widen out that hole until your twine fits through. Again, I want to repeat that this is just a step for the adults, so make sure that you have an adult from home helping you. But once you have two holes in the top of your bottle, as you can see, it's time to feed your twine through. And this is where you can grab your piece of twine out of your kit, as well as your plastic needle. You can thread your twine onto your plastic needle and feed it down one side of the bottle and then back up the other side, making this loop like I have here that you can tie off at the end. After we've got a nice handle on our plastic bottle bird feeder, then it's time to feed the birds. And the first thing that our bird friends are going to need is a perch. So. That's this part right here. And once again, we're just going to take our push pin and pair of scissors, and we're going to make two holes, one on this side of the bottle here, and one directly across from it on the other side. Now, I chose to make my holes starting right at the lip of where the bottle goes from being rounded to being straight up and down. And I think that that's a great place for you to start too. But it's your bird feeder, so you can start wherever you like. Just make sure you have an adult's help. Now, as I mentioned, when you're punching your holes, I've used a thumbtack and a pair of scissors, but you might have other tools at home that would make this job a lot easier. I don't have very many tools, so I had to work with this, 
But if your adult at home has something better, you can definitely use that too. So at this point, we have our bottle, we have our perch, and we have something to hang it with. The last thing we need is a way for our bird friends to get our bird seed. And you guessed it, once again, we're gonna put two holes in the bottle. What the packet re recommends doing is taking a ruler and measuring about two inches up from our perch and adding another hole there. And that is where your bird friends are gonna get your bird seed out. If you have really fine bird seed, then you might need a smaller hole. If you have really big bird seed, like sunflower seeds, then you might need a bigger hole for your birds to be able to get your food out of. So once again, adults are just gonna take the thumbtack, punch our holes, and widen them with a pair of scissors. Then finally, our bird feeder is just about complete, but we're missing the most important thing, the bird seed. Now, I didn't have bird seed to put in my bird feeder, but I wanted to show you how it worked, so I filled it with these beads instead. All you're going to do is gently turn your bird feeder over, take the cap off, and you can pour your bird seed right on in. I recommend filling it up at least most of the way, leaving a little bit of space up top. Again, that line right where it goes from rounded to straight up and down is a great marker. But you wanna fill it up most of the way because in order for our birds to use our bird feeder, we're going to wind up turning it back upside down, just like this, and hanging it somewhere in your backyard. So if you don't fill your bottle very full, let's say we only fill it to here, then our bird friends aren't going to be, get it, be able to get to it out of the holes way up here. But once you've done all that, you have a really great recycled homemade bird feeder to help out your feathered friends in your backyard. Alrighty friends, so now that we've got our recycled plastic bottle bird feeder built and hanging in our backyard full of bird seed for all of our feathered friends, now it's time to do something very important and very scientific, and that's record the birds that we see in our backyard. And in order to do that, we're going to make our very own bird or nature journal. So in order to make our journal, we are going to take the strips of paper just like this, that we have in our kit. And as you can probably see, we're gonna fold them in half and punch two holes right here and right here that are in a straight line across the spine of our fold. And this is going to be the basis for our journal. Then we can go ahead and decorate the cover of our journal, which I've already done. And you wanna make sure that you don't get too close to the holes that you've punched because that part is going to be covered with our popsicle stick. So right now we're off to a pretty good start. We have a great design for the cover and we have lots of pages to write on, but it doesn't stay together very well. So in order to do that, we're just going to take our popsicle stick and we're going to place it over the spine of our book where the two punched holes are. Then we can take our rubber band and we are just going to feed that through the holes that we've punched Feeding it through one end like this. And once we have our rubber band like this, we can go ahead and put our popsicle stick through it, pulling the rubber band tight, just like that. Once our rubber band's on there nice and tight and our popsicle stick is all lined up, it's time to bind the bottom half of our book. And we're going to do that by taking our rubber band, feeding it through the bottom hole of our book, very carefully. And we might need to pull on it just a little bit to stretch it out and get it through the bottom hole of our notebook. But once we do, just like this, we're gonna feed that over the bottom part of our popsicle stick, pulling it nice and tight. And once we've done that, we can push our popsicle stick back into place and we've got our bound notebook. This rubber band will hold it together nice and neat and we can turn it to the different pages to record what birds we see. Now, you might be wondering what is the best way to record the birds that we see? And we're going to join our friends the Wild Kratz, Nature Cat, and Psy Girls to figure out exactly the best way to record the birds that we see. 
and each of these handouts have some different ideas. The Wildcrafts page is not only going to tell you another way that you can make a journal, but it will also tell you things that you can write down, such as the day's date, what birds and animals you saw, how many there were, and what time of day it was. All very important things for any scientist. The Sci Girl activity is a little bit more involved, and this one involves going back to the places that we've been before. So we're going to go bird watching and describe some of the birds that we're not familiar with. Then, as always, go to our local library to look up those birds, or you can also use the internet to determine which birds we saw, and then go bird watching again and see what else we can find. Finally, our friend Nature Cat here has a different take on a nature journal that you can cut out and fold into a different nature journal to record your findings. So no matter which way you do it, I hope that you have lots of feathered friends to watch and many, many birds filling up the pages of your journal. Okay, friends, suppose you're out on the trail, you're looking for birds, and you start to get really hungry. You know what you need? You might need some trail mix. Trail mix always makes a good snack that you can take with you when you're outside looking for birds or doing whatever this summer. So luckily in the kit, there is a recipe for math trail mix. And that's what I based my trail mix on, the recipe here. But I used what I had at my house and the things that I liked, and you can do that too. You can use things that you have or things that you and your family like. So in mine, I don't know if you can see, but the recipe said you could add some nuts and I had pistachios at home, so that's what I used. I put some cereal in, some dried cereal, some raisins, dried cherries. I had those at home, chocolate chips, or something sweet. And for something salty, I put in some goldfish. And I got the colored ones because I think those are very exciting. And I wanted my trail mix to look colorful too. So now I have a colorful and yummy snack to take whenever I'm looking for birds. And you can do the same. It'll be very easy. You can make it however you like and enjoy. Friends, did you know that sometimes birds will see big windows, maybe windows in a big building or on the side of a on side of a building or on a house and think that's the way they should fly and accidentally fly into the window and maybe get hurt? A way that you can protect the birds and keep them from flying into your windows is by putting decals on your windows and that's what I'm going to show you about now. In this kit, there are two ways to make decals. If the decals are up on your window, then the bird will think that's not the way to go. They'll think there's something there and then they won't accidentally fly into the window. So if you would like to do this and you have permission, make sure you get permission, please, from a grown up before you put anything on the windows. But if you would like to do that, you can do this two different ways. It's the same basic idea, but they're just colored two different ways. To make the decals, you're going to use glue, regular glue like this, and about a quarter teaspoon, uh, two tablespoons of glue and a quarter teaspoon of dishwashing soap, which is what this is. And there will be glue in your kit. And by a happy coincidence, <laughs> we didn't do it on purpose, but it worked out. This little container has about two tablespoons of glue. So you can just put your, add your dish soap to this if you would like. Make sure you cover up your workspace first so no glue spills out. You can either put down plastic, newspapers, something like that. If you want to work with this little container, very carefully take off the top, add the quarter teaspoon of dish soap, and then you can take your paintbrush that will be in the kit and just mix it all together till the soap's mixed in. And if you don't want to use this, you can pour it into a bigger cup or a bowl, and then it might be a little easier to mix. You won't have to worry about it spilling. So take your glue, add the dish soap, and then you're set. That's what makes the decals. Now the two ways that you can color them, if you're using this way, on these papers, they add the color food with food coloring right into the glue mixture. And I think this is a really good idea that they did. They used a, an old egg carton. And in each of the cups there for the eggs, they used a different color. So they put some glue with the dish soap in it in each of the cups and then added food coloring to each one. So then they could make designs like this in the colors that they wanted. 
or you could do it, color them the way I did, like this, which is done, the coloring is done by using markers. And I got this idea from a video I found online from the Theodore Roosevelt Sanctuary and Audubon Society in New York. And Diana in their videos showed me how to do this. And there's also a paper in your kit with a link to the video if you would like to watch that. So either way, you can, if you'd like to make birds, you can use the bird template that's in the kit. Or if you don't wanna make birds, you can do whatever design you want. You can make stars, you can make hearts, you can make circles, whatever you would like. But if you wanna use the bird template, you would cover that with the sheet protector, this piece of plastic. If you're using another picture as a guide, you just put this on top, or if you're just freehanding something, you just do all your work on this plastic. So I'm gonna show you how to do it if you were using the bird template. The bird template goes underneath, and then you're going to put the glue on top here. And it would be helpful, I think, to tape this down so the plastic doesn't shift. But then you're going to take your paintbrush, take the glue, and put it all along here. This is, you're not gonna be painting on the paper, you're going to be painting on the plastic here, but this way you can still see the, the line. I needed the line, so you just put the glue all along here. And here's what not to do. <laughs> Don't do what I do. When I did mine, I do like the way they look, but I didn't put enough glue on. And that means my layer of glue is too thin to peel off. So these ones are pretty much stuck. But that's okay because, you know, if this happened to me at home, I would just hang up the whole plastic and do it that way because it would still decorate the windows so the birds won't fly into it. This has this middle part where you can put a paper in so it's got two layers. So if you wanted to, if this accidentally happens to you, you could take the, cut the top part off rather and put that one up and then you can still use the other side to make more birds like this with a thicker layer of glue. What I figured out now is after the glue dries and it's going to need to dry for about eight hours. So you might wanna start the project one day and come back to it the next day when it's dry. But as I said, fill in all the space here and you want eh, not too thin, kind of a thick layer, not super thick, but thick enough so you don't wanna be able to see any of the blue paper underneath. Make sure you put enough glue on so you can't really see through the blue right here. After it dries, if you find that you can see through it, if it goes completely transparent and you have to, to take this up to see where it is, that is probably not enough glue. So you might need to add some more and then let it dry again, because that's what happened to me. To check, to see if it's dry enough, you can touch it very gently if it looks dry, but if it feels a little bit sticky or tacky at all, keep letting it dry a little longer. Probably needs a little bit more time. But once it seems like it's completely dry, if you were doing the, the kind with the uh, food coloring, it's ready to peel off and put on your window. But if you're doing with markers, like this, like I was doing, once it's all dry, then you can just take markers. If you have some um, Crayola markers at home or Sharpies, you can just color right on top of the glue. And you can keep it on the guide here. And that way you can see where you want to have the tail, if you want to have a beak, if you want to put an eye on, something like that. The markers might get on your hands a little bit. They did on mine, but I had the washable marker, so it just came off. Um, but when you are coloring, make sure you color gently because if you press too hard, the glue is pretty fragile, so it might poke a hole in it. And if it does, that's okay too. It'll still be together enough that you can put it on your window. So when you're all done drawing your pictures, let that dry for a little bit too, I think. And then you'll hope <laughs> that you can take it off. But if not, just hang it up like this. And you can even do that on purpose. If you want to use a thin layer, you can do it that way too. And just hang this paper up on your window. I, it, I realized that I did these ones after the glue had been sitting for a little while. So you can do that too. You can take the lid off and let it sit for a little while so the glue kind of thickens up. And that seemed to work a little bit better too. 
for getting the thicker layer of glue. And once you've peeled it off, if you were doing the marker, the side that you did not color on, that's what goes up against the window. So in my case, it would be this back side is what presses against the window. So you'll carefully peel it off, slowly peel it off, carry it carefully to the window, if you have permission to put it on the window, and then put that back side on and just gently press it onto the window. If it doesn't quite stick to the window, you can just follow my craft motto, which is always, if all else fails, just use tape. I taped the green bird on here, and I'm probably going to need to add a little bit of tape for this brown bird too. So you can tape it to the window also, and that will also work, and it'll still protect your windows from the birds and protect the birds from your windows. You can keep using this plastic again and make as many decals if you'd like. You just need to find some more glue and add your dishwashing soap. And then if you have permission and if you want to, you can decorate all your windows and help keep the birds safe. Well, friends, we have had so much fun figuring out the different ways that we can interact with the birds in our backyard. And it wouldn't be possible without our friends at WQED Education and Clearview Federal Credit Union, who helped provide the kits that we were able to give to you. But we also want to see how your activities turned out. So be sure to send pictures on over to us at kids at adamslove.org. And don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube for updates not only about Inquire Within, but everything else that we do here in the library. And as always, happy crafting, everybody.